What are these things called reverse mortgages? Oh my goodness, I'm running across so many family members who are either working with loved ones or trying to find ways that they can pay for long-term care for loved ones who are continuing to get older and need that type of supervision. And they quite often turn and look at the property um, that, the, uh, that the loved one may own or someone owns in the family as a means for funding the care that that loved one needs. And they may come across uh, when they're looking at their loved one's uh, finances and, and, and uh, mortgage statements that they are either in a reverse mortgage already or they've been approached by uh, reverse mortgages. You've probably seen the commercials. <laughs> you probably somewhere in your periphery have heard about it or because you're listening to this, you're very, very um, interested in learning more about what reverse mortgages are. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, very briefly here today. I'm Courtney Rollins, the Life and Transitions po Experts podcast host as well as the certified probate expert and senior transition specialist for Durham, North Carolina. Essentially, I help families with the house and the stuff when they are dealing with big transitions, such as either selling the estate of a loved one or trying to find vi valuable, not valuable, but va valuable solutions for uh, paying for long-term care. And quite often that is when the house is involved and I can come in and hopefully uh, help support. But with that, I really try my best to uh, to share as much information as I can as possible about if uh, about topics that are related to long term care and related to estate planning and the probate process. Um, and that's why we're looking at reverse mortgages today. Would love for you to hit the like and subscribe. Would love for you to leave a comment, uh, message. Uh, hit, let me hear your thoughts. What's going on? What type of topics are you interested in hearing? What do you need help with? How can we be of service? I would love to hear that. So please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. What's going on here? I'm not sure what happened right there, but there we go. All right, if you're watching this on YouTube, it does have the slides connected to it. So it may be helpful to you. And if you're listening on podcasts or uh, like in Spotify or Apple, then go check it out on YouTube, Life and Transitions Experts uh, Podcast, uh, Experts Channel, YouTube channel. So a reverse mortgage. It's typically for homeowners who are, are 62 years or older. Uh, who actually own the house either outright or at least 50% of the of the home. Now, reverse mortgage is going to increase your monthly cash flow because it will remove or eliminate the need to pay that monthly uh, mortgage. Essentially, the house is now uh, being is is used as the um, security to provide you with funds that cover the um, cover the loan. So basically, it's the house that is now. Um, being uh, used for collateral by financial institutions. And it also will provide up to about 70% of the equity in a home in a form of cash or line of credit. So if you have a house that's worth 1,000 and you uh, actually own it completely outright, so it's worth 1,000, they'll give you, quite often will give you up to about $70,000 uh, either in cash or in line of credit. But of course you need to make sure you check with a vetted FHA uh, lender to make sure that you know what's specific to your situation and if a reverse mortgage is even something that you want to pursue. It's not for everyone, but make sure you check it out to see if this is a viable solution. Um, let's just look really quick. Yeah, it's going to be in and out. Some of the pros, some of the cons. Some of the pros, once again, there's no restriction on what the money can be used for. So you once you receive those funds, you can receive it in one large lump fund sum, or you can receive it as like a line of credit, pull it out as you go, or you can just receive it in monthly installments. Uh, you could also refinance at any time to adjust and change the interest rates or the change and adjust um, uh, based on maybe the value of the property is going up and you want to pull more out. And you can always make monthly payments or prepay at any time without any penalty. Um, so those are good things to, to note. And the loan will never exceed more than the house is valued. So if the loved one passes away or or for whatever reason, maybe they um, decide to sell it, it's they're never going to be underwater when they sell the property, particularly I mean, if they sell the property back to the to the uh, uh, to the bank. And another pro is that the bank usually isn't as, as uh, strict when it comes to credit checks and other underwriting um, requirements. So that may be very, very viable, viable. I don't know why I keep trying to use that word, <laughs> but it may be something that you uh, consider. Now, some of the cons is, oh my gosh, especially when it comes to Medicaid and uh, 
the requirements to fulfill Medicaid, it can be very challenging and very complicated. So again, do not make any decisions without consulting vetted uh, um, tax preparers, uh, financial advisors, uh, as well as lenders to see what's going to be the best fit for you. And because they are providing a premium service, the fees are generally higher. The interest rates are usually higher and the fees coming with administrating it is usually higher. Another challenge is that um, while you are holding the interest rate or holding this mortgage, this loan, you can't deduct the interest you pay on the annual taxes until the loan is completely paid off. Uh, so sometimes home ownership gives you all benefits and taxes, and this one will have to be deferred until the actual loan is completely paid off. And you must remember, uh, particularly if you have become very used to not paying that monthly mortgage again, you still are responsible for the property tax and the proper type of insurance. And you need to do that because if those go, then you can risk losing the home um, in foreclosure. So those are the things to consider um, when you're thinking about reverse mortgage. Now, uh, quite often here in this space, we are looking at helping people in the probate process, um, but also part of that process is sometimes downsizing or finding homes and spaces for loved ones that are remaining surviving um, uh, spouses and family members and loved ones would love to help you in that situation. Um, you see, we're a vendor full service uh, provider that connects you to someone on our team that can help help you navigate this process, hopefully a lot smoother um, than it's going. Well, hopefully it's going uh, smooth regardless if you uh, are listening to this and find this. And hopefully you find this helpful. All right, folks, um, that is it for right now for reverse mortgages. We're going to keep going deeper. I'm going to be looking a lot more at how to help families pay for long-term care because it is definitely an issue that is uh, becoming more and more relevant as we get older and as we uh, live longer and as technology and health increases, um, we must deal with some of those implications. A good problem to have, good problem to have. All right, folks, this is Courtney Rollins, Rising Tides. It lifts all sales. Cheers.